The windswept journey to Valarm can be an act of penance in itself. Valarm doesn't offer excitement or adventure, yet many come here for months at a time. Some never leave at all. They say that Valarm saves them. This is one of the holiest sites of the Russian Orthodox Church, home to a thriving monastery, the lay community that works with it, and groups of volunteers that come and go throughout the year. For the faithful, this is a journey for the soul, a pilgrimage. This is the place that has been consecrated to God for almost a thousand of years. People came here 20 some years ago to re-establish the monastic life on this island. So they did that believing that uh, Christ is the only source of true joy and uh, happiness in life. That understanding penetrated into everything that uh, surrounds us uh, in the monastery. And uh, people, I suppose, feel that, feel the love of Christ or working through people. So girls, we'll divide into groups now. So we need about, um, Sergey, how many people do you need? Seven. Seven people. Who will you choose? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people, good. The rest will split into two. One half will go to the farm, the other to the upper garden. Who's already been to the upper garden? You. Okay, then. Can I go to the upper garden? I'm allergic to animals. Can I go to the farm? And me. We'll go to the farm. Cows, awesome. I'd come to Valarm with a group of volunteers, men and women of all ages, who are here to give something back to God. And in this case, it means hard work. This is the middle of the busy tourist season, and there's plenty to do down on the farm. All right. Come in, come in. Into the chicken coop. It's like into the lion's den. Tag. <coughs> can I? Careful, careful. How to hold her? She doesn't know you. Careful. Like this? It's okay? Put her on your hand. She'll sit on your hand. This is a bit stressful for them. Touch her on the neck. Like this. Okay, so we... Apparently they like having their wattles stroked. But uh, this one's gone... Far away from me. We'll try this side. Ooh. So. Here we go, madam. What's that? Like this? They're sanctified on Valam, and they're very kind. See how kind they are? <laughs> good girl, good girl. Valam special eggs. Let's see what the fuss is all about. That's the one, two, three. Whether it's the saintly atmosphere or something in their feed, they're certainly fantastic layers. Two gigantic chickens here, right? Go on then. Up. Excuse me. Thank you very much. One, two. Yes, I know, it's not very nice. And that's it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One set done. Only another 775 to go. The volunteers come from a huge variety of different backgrounds. Svetlana is a model from Moscow, but she's not afraid of getting her hands dirty. It's probably not normal that a girl like me came here instead of going to Turkey or enjoying summer on a beach somewhere. But here I am, living with monks and weeding someone else's garden. But there are other people that look at themselves and at life in a completely different way, and they're not held back, really. We're all here. Valam, for me, is a place of strong spiritual power. I've wanted to come here for a long time. Now there is a possibility I can become a volunteer. 
Here, we work for the glory of God and help restore this place. There are common threads that bind many of the people here together, and the group often becomes like a surrogate family. Mostly, these are Orthodox people who came here to find uh, brotherhood. But of course, there is some percentage that come uh, here uh, looking for their way in life, and uh, then I take them for a walk in the woods and uh, try to do whatever I can to help them find the answer. Many people simply come for the island's outstanding natural beauty. Edged by rugged shorelines and covered with lush greenery, this is truly a tranquil getaway. But there are some visitors to Valam who have no families to return to and whose trip to the island is a welcome break from a difficult life. Lika Zelezniak runs a camp for children from local orphanages who also have learning difficulties. For many, it's the first time they've spent nights away from the city. The first time we came here with disabled children. For many years before, we used to take the kids on trips. We did that because we understood that nature does children a world of good. That year, we decided to try working with children with the help of Volam's nature. And this place turned out to be totally unique. It's not just the nature here that works. You should bear in mind that these children are from a correctional orphanage. They are believed to be unable to go to an ordinary school because of some mental disability. In fact, this isn't true. They are not mentally retarded whatsoever. These are the first kids that just sit on the shore of Ladoga and watch the storms, the splashing water. And they say, thank you for choosing such a beautiful place. It was simply amazing. They feel it. They can feel the beauty. Apparently, they don't have good feelings in their lives. Hardly any. 15-year-old Denise is just one of the youngsters reaping the benefit. This is his second time on the island, and he says it's changed his life. But it's a rocky road that's brought him here. I can't say that I had a good childhood. My dad was an alcoholic, my mom was too. Mom ended up in prison. That's how I ended up in an orphanage. Everything changes as time goes by. At the moment, I have no grudge against anyone. My life has become so much better now. I've forgotten my past. It's no good remembering it. And he's a handy man to have around when you catch something, too. Oh. Pull it down to the shore. There's a beauty. Woohoo! Ah. Nice weather for ducks. I'm king of fishing! Yes! In English weather! What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Seriously? Uh... Ксения, Светлана, Тамара, Валентина, Ольга, Виктор, Ксения, Ксения. I was staying in the volunteers' dormitory. Normally, men and women are kept segregated, but the odd get-together is allowed, especially for a meet and greet session. Everyone says where they're from, why they've come to Valam, and their name. Then, all you've got to do is remember them. Ксения, Огнешка, Елена. Сергей! Okay, let's have a go. Ксения, Светлана, Тамара, Валентино, Ольга, Виктор, Ксения, Ксения, Вера, Даша, Александр, Владимир, Сергей, Мария, Алла, Галина, Полина. 
Вероника, Светлана, Светлана, Ксения, Светлана, Николай, Геннадий, Ксения, Агнешка, Елена, Сергей, Джейн. And you said he wouldn't be able to do it. Sometimes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes. Yes. Work at the monastery takes us all around the island, along roads that people have traveled here for more than 150 years. Although most of the brothers live in the center of the monastery, a small selection choose to isolate themselves from the rest of the community retiring to hermitages where only men are allowed to enter the grounds. The Russians call these places skeets, and they're among the holiest centers of Valam. Each one is way off the beaten track, and for some of the volunteers, the journey to God has been anything but straightforward too. I used to be an atheist and believed in nothing but science, logic and facts. I was looking for truth everywhere. I followed all the popular fashions that people write books and make films about. Only after 20 years of searching did I become an Orthodox Christian. After praying at the coffin of a famous Russian saint, I discovered that many things had changed. First of all, the pain in my leg that I'd suffered for ages had disappeared. And last but not least, I discovered the ability to read in Old Church Slavonic, even though I'd never learned how to do that. Those who've been here more than once say you have to put the time into Valam to understand it fully. That living and working here is the only way to really tap into its energy. The job is tough and repetitive, but none of the volunteers complain. Everyone is confident of a spiritual reward and happy that they're working to re-establish a faith that was so persecuted during the Soviet Union. Our faith is the only branch that has managed to keep the apostolic tradition alive. That's not changed since the time of the apostles. Maybe that's why it has preserved the bread of life that Jesus Christ spoke of, the living word. That's why Russia is experiencing a spiritual rise now. Valam's pride and joy is its transfiguration of the Saviour Cathedral, and the sound of its bells draw tourists, pilgrims and volunteers to worship or to work. Let's work for the glory of God. While the skilled workers cut, hammer and replace, the volunteers keep supplies coming and clean up the mess. It's a massive job. The cathedral is 76 meters high, and in some areas, they're having to remove more than 120 years of dirt. When I came here last year, it was in approximately the same condition. Yeah, it's a long process. This is serious work. It's very expensive and requires a high degree of professionalism. I was surprised when they invited volunteers to work here. At best, they're trusted with work like this. Is it enough or do we need more? I think it's enough. You'll have to carry it. Let's go. Is it heavy? I'm doing wonders for my back. I'll take it. All the waste has to go somewhere, and as Sergei and I are responsible for getting it off the scaffolding as quickly as possible, we need to take the direct route. The bucket and pulley. A primitive transport system, but it works. For 40 years it had no proper roof, it wasn't looked after properly, and still it endured all these conditions. That only means that the cathedral was made really very well. It was built with a huge margin for safety. The cathedral will stand like this for many years to come. Now we're trying to save what's being preserved. This work should be done, and it should be preserved. This is truly part of the national heritage. Не 
Нет для меня дом разольется, И сердце девичье забьется, С восторгом чувств не для меня, Не для меня. Журча. В Лану есть особая черта. Это природа, которая говорит о Боге. Да? Это, естественно, люди, в каждом из которых я вижу здесь Бога. Да? Это нас объединяет. Остров, общая работа вместе, богослужение. Лика и ее team of volunteers want their children to leave Valam with a new perspective also. The work they do here fosters a spirit of cooperation. And they can see their efforts developing before their eyes. It's so real here. It's hard to explain. Everything is so natural. This is the way people should live, I guess. We wanted to show these children that there is a place where they can ask for help in case something really bad happens to them. They understand completely that bad things will happen to them in the future. They are perfectly aware of what life has in store for them. They know that there will be a lot of drug dealers and alcohol, and they understand how hard it is to resist those things. So it's very important for them to know that there is a place where they're always welcome. They should know how to find the way to this place. Walking around Valam is like stepping back into a different age, and it's easy to see why so many regard it as a sanctuary away from the real world. It seems to have a physical and emotional energy, which the monks say is a manifestation of God's grace. It's had such a profound effect on so many that there's even a syndrome named after it, Valamka, the compulsion to return to the island again and again. And it's not just adults who experience it. My mom first brought me here before I started going to school. I liked it very much and it's become my favorite place now. Why is it your favorite place? I like it because of its weather, because of the monastery. It feels so good in here. They've got a farm, it's nice to live here. People are very kind. Do you know what you want to do when you grow up? To be a monk. You want to be a monk? Why? It's just what's in my heart. I can't explain why I feel this way. And live here? Yes, I want to live on Valam. What he truly wants at this point is not to be a monk, but he wants, he wants purpose. He wants something pure, something which dignifies him, uh, something which speaks of him as a, as a man, as a human being. People became knights and soldiers for the same reason. I would certainly encourage him. Father Josef's journey to the Brotherhood here was more unusual than most. After attending university in St. Petersburg, he spent 15 years living and ministering in the U.S before retiring to Valam. He says each monk must earn his place in the monastery. Spiritual pastors of the monastery will decide whether you're prepared to become a novice. And you'll become officially a novice on the part of the Brotherhood and spend some time that way. And a few years or maybe months uh, later, uh, if you still uh, decide to embrace this kind of life and people see you uh, uh, as a benefit to the community, uh, you'll be tonsured and perhaps even ordained uh, to the priesthood. The monastic community here has been rebuilt in the last 20 years after a period during the Soviet Union when the area served as a mental asylum. Now there are around 100 brothers living here permanently. But before the Russian Revolution of 1917, there were more than a thousand, some of whom left a legacy down the ages. This quiet scene is called the Smolensk Skeet, and it's famous in particular because of one monk, Ephraim. He took it upon himself to pray for the souls of dead soldiers, and he took his work so seriously that he dug his own grave 
and every night he would lie in his own coffin. And ever since then, the chapel has been dedicated for the souls of those who died for the faith and for the motherland. Even if a life of extreme self-sacrifice doesn't appeal, it is at least possible to follow in the footsteps of some of these old saints. And one of the most popular pilgrimages is to Valam's most famous hermit. This is the cave where St. Alexander of Speer lived. This is the place where Alexander of Spear spent hours praying in solitude. Here he would make a fire. The stones got warm and gave heat back, so he could spend winters here. He led such a righteous life that he was granted a vision. The Holy Trinity came to him in the form of three angels and ordered him to go to the river Spear and found a monastery there. It is still functional. Excursions like these are part of the joy of Valam. There's an archipelago of small islands just waiting to be explored, and the landscape always provides some great photos. But many of Valam's secrets are only revealed in the churches themselves. Bell ringing here is a real art, and the campanologists train for years to master the difficult rhythms. They need to control up to a dozen bells at once and make it look effortless. It's part of Valam's proud musical tradition, displayed in its full glory during the solemn services. I think we should fill our lives with as many rich and diverse impressions as possible. Today I'm at Balaam, in two months I'll be working somewhere else. In such a way your worldview builds up on different things. You can develop yourself and create your personality. This earth is like a hotel. We're only here temporarily. We choose where we'll go, to hell or to heaven. God tests us on the earth. If you obey me and follow all my laws, then you'll go to heaven. If you don't, then you'll go to hell. We have to move on in this life. Here you get some kind of luggage that you will later take with you into the city. We have to move on, make plans, build families, and realize in your family what you've learned here. But moving back to real life is easier for some than for others. The children from Lika's orphanage camp have reached the end of their stay, and it was time to see them off at the docks. It's clear to Lika that these aren't the same kids that arrived on the island just a few weeks ago. That at least for a while, Valam has worked its magic and brought a little joy into their lives. But it can't make this moment any less painful. Perhaps the monks of old settled here because they felt there was something otherworldly about Balaam, that it was always a place with special energy, either from nature 
or from something more divine. For the pilgrims and volunteers who journey here, one visit is rarely enough, and many will return to Valal, a place with the power to heal the spirit.